Okay, so our first example um, is a simple addition of two uh, vectors that are applied at uh, vertically opposite uh, directions. And this one I consider the tug of war example. We have one person who is pulling in this direction and applying a 15 newton force, and we have another person um, in, in the opposite direction applying a 5 newton force. Well, it's pretty easy to ask the question, who's going to win this tug of war? Well, the 15 newton force is going to win. But it doesn't mean that the penny in the middle here, this point that sort of divides the two, is just going to race to the left at 15 newtons. The 5 newtons of the one person pulling away is going to be subtracted from it. And so I don't think it's a big stretch to say that the resultant is a new vector heading in this direction but not as big. And I think you'd understand that the size of this would be 10 newtons. We call that the resultant. Remember the resultant is a vector, so we would say that the resultant is 10 newtons to the left. So our second example is doing the exact same thing, but uh, of course the vectors aren't behaving exactly the same as the first one. They're not um, opposite to each other, so it's not as easy as just being able to say 15 minus 5. Here, the behavior is going to be a little bit different. And the example I'd like you to try and picture in your head is two people pulling a boat uh, using two different ropes. We have one going pulling in this direction, uh, 10 newtons and the other one pulling in this direction and the boat is sort of back behind here making waves I'm going to steer him all and happy to do some and make you feel very excited um, again try not to get distracted by my brilliant artwork so when we have these two ropes being pulled in the different directions the result is that the boat is going to travel in some direction somewhere in between here, right? It's going to be something in here, okay? Somewhere in between there. It's not going to be exactly 21 newtons. That would happen if the 10 and the 11 were pulled in the exact same direction. You just add them up and say it's 21. They're pulling against each other a little bit. And as a result, the, re the resultant is going to be a little bit less than 21. We'll figure out how much it is in a second. The other thing that's interesting is a question that I like to ask. Where is it going to be? Is it going to be exactly in the middle here? Or is it going to be pulled more towards the 10 or more towards the 11? And hopefully you're all screaming at this board right now and saying it's going to move more towards the 11. Because, of course, that applied a bit more force. So in a second, we're going to figure out um, theta, which is going to be probably something like that. And I'm going to hope that our answer is a little bit more than 20. If it was 20, it would probably be right in the middle of these two. It's probably something a little bit more than 20 because it should be pulled a little bit more in the direction of the 11 newton force. So the important thing now is to take the real scenario that you see pictured over here and create a vector diagram. And I know that our picture, our scenario, looks like a vector diagram, but it's more of the real-life situation. We'd like to produce a vector diagram that we can actually solve. So in this case, it's an addition of these two ones, because the result is when you apply both of these forces, what happens. So let's add them. So first, we'll start by adding the 10 newton force. And again, I'm just tracing it over here so I know it's exactly the same size, and we'll add that. And we're going to add then the 11 newton force. And again, make sure that we have the same direction. Oops, I forgot my uh, uh, arrow tool. So now we'll go up and draw it. There we go. And we'll grab it. And remember, when we add it, we're going to add it to the end of the first one. And the resultant for vector then is going to be from the beginning of the first to the end of the second. And I'll just touch it up here to make sure it looks good. And if we actually looked at it, you'll see that it's very similar to that vector that I had drawn in between there. But there it is. 
So we'd like to figure out two things about it. Its magnitude, how long it is, and its direction, because that's an important question as well. So let's put in some known sides. We know that this was the 10 newton force, and this was the 11 newton force. And uh, this is my unknown. I'll call it R this time for resultant. And, um, and in a moment, we'll figure out what theta is right in here. So I'm just going to take this whole picture and move it down here so that so we have some room to do some math. And now let's go off and figure out what r is. So r squared, again, using the um, cosine law, is going to be 10 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 10 times 11 cos something, the angle between them. So again, we have to go back and figure out what the angle between them is. Well, the angle between them is right here. How am I going to figure that out? Well, again, if I extend this, I'll be able to recreate that 40 degrees that's in my picture in my vector diagram. There's what 40 degrees is. This time, then, the inside vector, or angle, excuse me, is 140. 180 minus 40 is 140. So the angle, then, in between them is 140 degrees. Continue on. I'll let you um, figure this out on your own, and you'll figure that the answer is 19.7 newtons. We do have a unit this time. If you want some more time, just ask your teacher to pause it, and then you can figure out that it's actually 19.7. Next is to find the angle. Again, we'll use the sine law. So it'll be sine theta over, well, what's opposite of theta is 11 in this case, equals, and then the other partner that we know we're going to use these, we just figured out what R was, and we'll use 140. So sine 140 over, and again, try and be as accurate as possible and just use the memory button on your calculator to get the full decimal, um, 19 point, whatever it was, to get 19.7. A little bit of math, since it's divide by 11, multiply by 11, sine theta equals 11 sine 140 over 19.7. Punch that in your calculator, inverse sine, and ultimately you should get 21 degrees. Again, if you'd like to Ask your teacher to pause it while you all figure it out. Feel free to do that. Now you'll notice that the answer is 21, and that's great, because if you think back to when we talked at the beginning, that means that this angle here is 21. And we'd hoped that it was going to be a little bit more than 20, because the 11 should pull it a little bit more in its direction. And so 21 seems like a reasonable answer. We'll now answer the question and figure out what the resultant is. So therefore, the resultant is 19.7 newtons at an angle of 21 degrees to the 10 newton force. We could have figured out theta as this other angle here, that would be absolutely fine, but of course you would describe it in the uh, um, relative to the 11 newton force. The problem with finding that angle is trying to figure out where that angle is in my vector diagram. But this one is a little bit easier to find that. So if you need some more time, ask the teacher to pause the video right now. Or I'm going to move on to the next concept, which is this idea of the equilibrium. So the equilibrium is the opposite force to the force necessary to counterbalance the resultant. So it's a force that is vertically, or sorry, exactly opposite 
that would the resultant that would keep the scenario at rest. So if we look back at this example that we just did, here we have uh, the two vectors, the 10 newton force, the 11 newton force. The resultant is something in between them. Let's call E the, the, the equilibrium that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So I'm actually going to use the fact that I'm on a smart board to help us here. And I'm going to clone this. And I'm going to flip it uh, left and flip it this way. So now notice I have the exact vector but in the opposite direction. And where is it applied? It's down here. So this vector here is E, and it's the equilibrium. And so if we had these two vectors here, this vector here and this vector here, pulling on some object like the boat right there, and we had Mr. Strongman on the other opposite side, he would be pulling at exactly 19.7 uh, newtons in the exact opposite direction to the resultant. And as a result, the boat itself would be standing still because the equilibrium would counterbalance the result. We end up with this new vector E. So it's obvious that E is 19.7 newtons. What's not so obvious is maybe um, how we describe the angle. Well, we're still going to describe it relative to our 10 newton force, but which makes it this one. Now, if you recall in the question before, we just figured out that this was 21. So 180 minus 21 gets us that this is 159 newtons. And so therefore, E is 19.7 newtons, exactly the same, but it's at 159 degrees to the 10 newton force.